Hello and welcome to this session on plant quarantine regulations in India. Today we are going to discuss what system is existing in India for the plant quarantine regulations. If we just try to go back means in from the ancient time the people have the habit when they move from one place to another they usually carry the plant seeds livestock with them and knowingly or unknowingly they carry with them the plant and the pest disease pest and diseases associated with these plants and animal so these these uh, pest and diseases go from one place to another and spread to the other plants and animals so let us now try to understand wh what how the plant quarantine system in india is working if we go into the uh, word quarantine the quarantine word has been derived from latin word quarantum which is meaning 40 it means the quarantine stands for the 40 days detention period to maintain isolation to understand what are the pests and diseases associated with the plant the term quarantine remain associated with the procedure of detention and inspection inter alia to cover the protective efforts for the exclusion of the pest and diseases from farm and horticulture crops as well as forest and fruit trees so this is just a maintaining an isolation for 40 days to understand what are the pest and diseases associated with a plant or seeds if we try to understand the origin of the quarantine system there is an interesting story which goes from europe what happened introduction of grapevine powdery mildew pathogen into europe happened with the grapevine from america so they imported grapevine plants or cuttings from the america and it led to the introduction of grapevine powdery mildew in the europe since this disease was not existing in the europe this disease spread like anything uh, in the europe and it covers almost all the crops of the grapevines so just to cover up or just to get out of this problem the europe tried to import the powdery mildew resistant variety from america but unfortunately it brought another problem phylloxera vestatrix a root inhabiting aphid of grapevines so when you try to came out from one problem another problem came means this aphid came with this uh, resistant varieties and when they try to get away from this aphid another uh, problem came with downy mildew plasmopara viticola and black rot so to get away from this aphid they brought two more problem for the grape wine and the grape wine production in the france greatly declined due to these pests but primarily the reason was downy mildew infection so keeping all these problems means uh, to get away from one problem they brought another problem in their grape wine crops and this led to the first regulation to ban the import of plant which was passed by the french government in 1913 by banning import of planting materials for america so this was the how the quarantine regulation go development in terms of in europe if we try to understand the chronology uh, how the uh, quarantine regulations have developed in the world if you see in the context of india in 1906 india ordered the compulsory fumigation of imported cotton bales to prevent the mexican cotton bowl weevils in 1914 an international agreement on plant protection under the international institute of agriculture in rome was established in 1990 international convention on plant protection uh, was established but actually if you see the plant quarantine system uh, globally developed with the establishment of an organization international plant protection convention under the fao food and agriculture organization and india also became member of this organization ippc what we call as in short and by uh, becoming the member of this ippc india it was the obligation for india to make its plant quarantine system as per the requirement laid down in the ippc if you try to understand what are the different introduced pests in india means which are the pest we have primarily brought from uh, another countries these are some of the examples which we have brought from other countries for example coffee berry borer in coffee beans which came from sri lanka bunchy top in banana it came also came from sri lanka 
golden nematode in potato from UK, wart in potato from Netherlands, parthenium which we generally know by the name of congress grass, it came from the wheat from USA, argimon mexicana in mustard from USA and Mexico. So, these are some of the examples which we have brought from other countries through some import material into India. These are some of the pictures which shows that uh, uh, these introduced pests like bunchy topo banana, this uh, parthenium or congress grass, golden nematode and this kofi berry borer. If we try to understand the plant quarantine regulation in India means it started with the the Destructive Insect and Pest Act 1914. So, DIP Act was the first act which, which came into existence for regulation of import of plant and plant products. DIP Act, so before the establishment of Directorate of Plant Protection, Quarantine and Storage, DIP Act was enforced by the Custom Department. So, they were responsible and they were implementing this uh, provisions of the DIP Act. But since the methods implemented by the uh, custom department were very unscientific uh, for inspection and clearance and because of this uh, reason new pest and disease entered into India. And uh, one of the main precursor for the introduction or establishment of directorate of plant protection, quarantine and storage uh, was the great Bengal famine which wiped out 3 million people of India in 1940 and 43 and the region cited was brown spot disease of rice. But primarily this was not the only reason for this uh, great Bengal famine, but the government decided that we should establish a directorate of plant protection, quarantine and storage and it was established in May 1946 under the Ministry of Food and Agriculture to take care of the import of the plants and plant uh, materials to avoid inadvertent entry of pests into India. So, this was the organization which was established for plant quarantine uh, to regulate. If we try to understand the DIP Act, the objective was very clear to make provisions for preventing the introduction into India of any insect, fungus or other pest which is or may be destructive to crop inclusive of agriculture crops, horticulture crops and forest plants. So, DIP act, the scope of the DIP act in, includes all types of plants and plant materials. We, if we try to understand the key features of the DIP act, three important definitions are given in the DIP act. One is crop, one is import and another is infection. So, crop includes all agricultural and horticultural crops and all trees, bushes or plants. Import in terms of DIP Act means that bringing or taking by sea, land or air across any custom frontiers defined by the central government. And infection means infection by insect, fungus or other pest injurious to a crop. So, it could be anything which is covered under the definition of pest could lead to the infection. Another uh, important key features of the DIP Act is to regulate or prohibit the import of articles which are likely to infect into India, to regulate or prohibit movement of articles likely to infect from state to state. So, domestic quarantine also falls within the ambit of the DIP Act, to levy restrictions on movement of prohibited items within India. So, under DIP Act, some of the items have been notified as prohibited items. So, it uh, gives the restrictions how it can be uh, restricted from movement within India. DIP acts, uh, under uh, DIP acts, government has the power to make rules which can prescribe the nature of the documents which need to accompany and other special conditions for regulating the movements of articles notified. The DIP acts empower state governments to make rules for detentions, inspection, disinfection or destructions of the notified articles. It also empowers the state governments to levy penalty for breach of any notification which has been made under the DIP Act. Under the DIP Act, the government has the power to frame the rules, regulations or the orders. So, one of such orders planned quarantine regulation of import into India order 2003 which we shortly call PQ order came in 2003. However, before that PQ order, the import regulation of cotton into, into India 1972 came into existence. 
to prevent the entry of cotton boll weevil into India. So, with the establishment of DPPQS, this was the first regulation uh, came into existence to prevent the entry of cotton boll weevil. After that, the plant fruits and seeds regulation of import into India, this order 1984 came into existence to regulate the seeds, plant and plant materials. However, in 1982, Eight, the government of India came with a policy on seed development and with this seed policy the aim of the government was to help the Indian farmers to obtain the best planting materials available in the world. But uh, this policy by the government to facilitate the farmers brought some problems also for India and which led to the uh, in government of India to revise the plant foods and seeds PFS order to revise in 1989 and special conditions were laid down for specific crops and list of crops prohibited to enter into India. So, to overcome those problems because of that seed policy, this revision was required and ultimately uh, in 2003, the plant quarantine regulation of import into India order was framed and came into force from 1st of January 2004 and it superseded the PFS order 1989. So, if we try to understand the key feature of this PQ order 2003, this order has 15 clauses, 12 schedules and 22 forms, which are the important documents uh, or mechanisms, uh, explains the mechanisms to regulate the import of plants and plant materials into India. If we see the schedule wise, what are the things given in this PQ order? Schedule 1 notifies the point of entry at seaport, airport and land frontiers. So, point of entries are given in schedule 1. Plant propagative materials such as seeds, plants, cutting bulbs, etc., are permitted only through our, uh, regional plant quarantine stations at Amritsar, Chennai, Kolkata, Mumbai and New Delhi. Commodities for consumption can be imported through all the notified. If you see the sh uh, schedule 2 notifies the point of entry at inland container depot, ICDs and container freight stations. Schedule 3 notifies the point of entry at foreign post offices. Schedule 4 notifies the commodities which are prohibited to import into India with justification. So, you need to have a proper justification, then only you can import these commodities. Schedule 4 notifies the commodities which are restricted to import into India for research purposes only and to be grown under the supervision of the Crop Specific Research Institute of IARI. Schedule 6 notifies the commodities which are regulated to import into India for propagation and consumption by the general public for commercial purpose with specific additional declaration for freedom from quarantine pest and with special treatment conditions to be followed prior to import. So, declaration and the treatments need to be accompanied prior to import and a phytosanitary certificate issued by the country of export need to accompany with consignment for the commodities defined under Schedule 6. Schedule 7 notifies the commodities that are list risk category for consumption purpose without any condition except that a phytosanitary certificate should accompany with the consignment. Schedule 8 notifies mentions prohibit the entry of 31 quarantine weeds of great invasive potential which can come as contaminant in import commodity. So, Schedule 8 defines the 13 quarantine weeds. Schedule 9 notifies the fee structures which are required for import of commodities and fumigation or treatment supervision charges. Schedule 10 notifies authorities to issue import permits for commodities covered in Schedule 5 and Schedule 6. Schedule 11 authorizes the inspection authorities to carry out the post entry quarantine inspection of imported propagative material. And the last schedule 12 stipulates the minimum quantity of seeds to be permitted for trial purposes including submission to Gene Bank at National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources at New Delhi. Some of the other features of the PQ order are all consignments of the timber logs shall be inspected on board prior to unloading at the port of the material. 
because this all woods and timber logs should be treated as stipulated in clause 9 of PQ order 2003 at the country of origin and the same should be endorsed in the phytosanitary certificate. So, the treatment need to be endorsed in the phytosanitary certificate. Solid wood packaging material which is the main problem for bringing the wood borers means a lot of pests remains there in the wood packaging material are regulated in accordance with the ISPM 15. This is the international standards for phytosanitary measures ISPM which is uh, developed by the IPPC. We discussed the, this is the international plant protection convention. Hence, import of solid wood packaging materials requires phytosanitary certificate and should be marked with approved marking as per the ISPM 15. Bulk consignments of the food grains shall be inspected on board prior to unloading at the port of arrival. Import can be made only for the commodities covered in schedule 5, 6 and 7. Uh, uh, it means only these commodities can be imported. Commodities are notified only after carrying out the pest risk analysis. So, this is the scientific part of the plant quarantine system means only the commodities notification of the commodity under PQ order is done after carrying out the PRA. Commodity is not covered in any schedules, PRA form is to be submitted to plant protection advisor. So, if any commodity is not covered for importing that commodity pest risk analysis form is to be submitted to carry out the PRA. The relaxation for commodities not covered in the schedule 5, 6 and 7 shall be accorded only by the joint secretary department of agriculture and cooperation under ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare. One time relaxation of import permitted permit and phytosanitary certificate shall be granted by the officer in charge after fumigation if mandatory and 5 time inspection fee and 5 time import permit fee to be collected in such cases for the commodities covered in schedule 6 and schedule 7. Subsequent relaxation can be granted only by the joint secretary of Min uh, department of agriculture and cooperation ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare. Import of live insects, biocontrol agents, Microbial cultures are permitted for research work with an import permit issued by the plant protection advisor only. Import of soil, peat, sphagnum, compost is prohibited. The same are permitted for specific research work only with an import permit issued by plant protection advisor. Import of germplasm, transgenics, GMOs permitted only with an import permit issued by the director of NPPGR. New Delhi uh, only. Now, we will try to discuss the scientific part, the risk analysis part of notifying the commodities in the PUQ order. This pest risk analysis is a science based approach. Quarantine pests are notified based on the scientific analysis of the pest risk. More than 700 quarantine pests have been notified so far after carrying out the PRA for import of around 1000 commodities. Quarantine weeds have also been notified under this PRA. PUQ implementation, each country needs to have national plant protection organization as per the IPPC requirements. So, for India, the directorate of plant protection, quarantine and storage headed by the plant protection advisor to government of India is the NPPO. The responsibilities of DPPQS or NPPO is issuance of phytosanitary certificate confirming that the exporters have met the importing country requirement, manage surveillance for pest outbreaks and control of pests. Another responsibility is to conduct inspections and if necessary dis disinfestations of treated consignments of plants and plant products. Ensure phytosanitary security of consignment from certification until export. Establish and protect pest free areas of low pest prevalence. Undertake the pest risk analysis for development of import phytosanitary measures. So, some country may request to allow some to export their materials to India. So, DPPQS carry out the pest risk analysis before allowing the market access.
DPPQS has established planned quarantine station at all the notified entry points all over India at international airports, seaports and land frontier. So far 5 uh, major regional planned quarantine stations, 53 minor planned quarantine stations and 60 inland container depots have been notified all over India. If we consider in terms of uh, success of DPPQS, there are certain interceptions which have been made because of this planned quarantine regulation system working in India and these are some of the examples like poti virus in oil palm, genthomonas campestris, a bacteria on anthurium, crown gall pathogen in rose, palm seed weevil on subal palm seeds, cybidium mosaic virus on dendrobium, garlic bulb bank canker on garlic bulb. So, these are some of the examples and means we can understand that if any exotic pest come into India, the social and economic impact would be whose uh, if in terms of uh, controlling these pests and diseases. Under the DIP Act, the domestic quarantine is also exercised by the DPPQS. Section 4A of the DIP Act empowers central government to implement domestic quarantine regulations. The domestic quarantine activities are being implemented by the state government to avoid the spread of pests across the states and from areas of the restricted distributions. If we talk about the import quarantine, import permit is, re is required for commodities covered in a schedule 6 prior to import. The importer or his authorized agent is required to file an application in a prescribed format to seek the import permit before the consignment is arrived on the port. And this is the flow chart which shows how the, the, uh, the import permit is uh, granted by the DPPQS. So, there is a procedural things and everywhere the timelines are given, submission of application is there, scru scrutiny of the application will be there, registration of the application, realization of the fees, input of application and based on the, uh, means, uh, the document made available, the uh, import permit can be uh, uh, granted or it can be denied. What are the documents required for the import permit? These are some of the documents like import permit, original importer's copy is required to be submitted, phytosanitary certificate in original need to be submitted, certificate of origin if anything is there custom bill, shipping or, or air bill, invoice and packing list, fumigation certificate if any has been carried out and the required inspection fee as per the schedule 9 is to be remitted to the in favor of the DPPQS, then only import permit application is considered. As far as the export quarantine is concerned, in inspection of agriculture commodities meant for export as per the requirements of the importing countries under international IPPC and issue of the phytosanitary certificate is done. The export inspection involves the sampling and detail, detailed laboratory test in case of seeds and planting material for propagation. Us visual examination with the hand lens and washing test etc. are carried out for plant material meant for the consumption. And this is the flow chart for the export inspection when any consignment is to be go for export, the, the application need to be submitted. and after proper inspection by the uh, plant quarantine department, the phytosanitary certificate is issued. Other than the d directorate of plant quarantine and storage, there are certain other organization which are uh, playing important roles in, in uh, the plant quarantine implementation in India. One uh, important organization is National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources, New Delhi for import of germplasm, transgenic, genetically modified organisms and crops covered in Schedule 5 and Schedule 6 meant for research purposes. Other than NBPBGR, there are crop specific research institutes of Indian Council of Agriculture Research. They are helping the plant quarantine department uh, in plant quarantine implementation. The state agriculture university and horticulture departments also played in very important roles and head of plant pathology division of state agriculture university also uh, play an important role in plant quarantine Im implementation. So, in nutshell we can understand the plant quarantine regulation is an important aspect and every citizen need to understand means by, by knowingly or unknowingly 
if we carry sometimes some plant or plant material from one place to another it may carry any pest or disease which may may not be prevalent in that place or area and when it spread i means it can establish to other plants and species which are existing in india um, in that particular place and we can understand that for controlling those pests and diseases lot of pesticides required to be and sometimes the whole crop is devastated so this directorate of plant plant Uh, protection quarantine and storage is playing a very important role in regulating the pest and disease into india so this is all what uh, uh, we have in this session thank you very much mm-hmm.